Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of She's At It Again. My name is Tanya, and I am so excited I'm going to help you make some pizza. And if you're like me, it took me years and years to figure out I can actually do this as good if not better than a restaurant. I'm not even kidding when I say this is restaurant quality pizza. Now, I'm not Italian. I've never lived in Italy. I've been there and their pizza's fine. It's, it's absolutely delicious, but I'm telling you, this is, this, yeah, this is the goods. This is the goods. You're gonna like this pizza. Follow the directions and I promise you, you will not be disappointed. First of all, I'm gonna show you in this video how to make pizza crust. Now, it's not gonna be a completed thing in one day. In fact, in four days is when we're gonna use this, but I'm gonna make the dough up right now put it in a bag, I'll show you how to do that. This is gonna sit in the refrigerator for four days and it's gonna be so much better than it is if you use it right away. It's not a cardinal sin to use it right away, but I'm telling you, it rolls out better and the flavor just gets so good after four days. I've used it as long as a week later than what I've made it and I was not even mad about that. It was totally, totally fine. But four days ideally is when you're gonna use this. So let's get started. I have a cup of water just heated to, I would say like warm bath water. You don't want it much over 100 degrees. If you have a thermometer, you can check it. You can get it up to 110, but that's about your limit. But about 100 degrees is a good temperature. To that, I'm gonna add maybe a half teaspoon of honey. I'm just gonna squeeze it in there. And what that's gonna do is give the yeast something to feed on once it gets in there. And I said I was gonna get a spoon when I walked over here and I didn't do it. So let me get a spatula. I'll get my favorite little blue spatula. Just stir that around. This is gonna make two pizza crusts, two full-size pizza crusts. I don't want it to soak yet. And because this is gonna be in the refrigerator for four days, we're not gonna need it to um, expand or rise a lot. I'm gonna use maybe half a teaspoon of yeast. You don't even have to use that much if you don't want to. Just a little bit of yeast. Trust me on this one. It's gonna be great. So we're gonna let our yeast just sit here and kind of get wet all over. We're not gonna wait for it to activate. Hopefully you have good yeast. You can test it in some warm water before you put it in this. We're just gonna let this get a little bit foamy. We've got our honey, our yeast, and our warm water in it. I'm also gonna put in there about two tablespoons of olive oil. Give that a little stir. And we're gonna put three cups of flour in there. Here's one. Here's two. And here's three. Can I just give you a helpful hint from somebody who's been there and done that? If you don't keep your flour and your basic ingredients at hand and easily accessible, you're not gonna use them. So it's one of those things like, um, like you have a favorite shirt, but if it's at the very top of your closet where you have to stand on a step stool and get it, it's all folded up and it's underneath stuff, you're never gonna wear it. So keep your flour and things that you're gonna need a lot of. If you're gluten intolerant, just bypass this. But keep your basic ingredients within reach so you don't have to say, oh, I don't wanna make that, I gotta get it, I gotta get it at the back of the pantry and dig that out. Don't keep your flour enclosed in a bag inside the pantry or inside the refrigerator at the very back to keep it fresh. Put it in an area where you can easily access it. Okay, that's my spiel about keeping your stuff easily accessible. Okay, on top of this, you're gonna add a teaspoon of salt. Let's be safe and put it on top of the flour and not directly in the liquid where it'll come in contact with the yeast. Some people say that the salt will kill the yeast I know it slows down its activation a lot. Um, that's part of the purpose of the salt in bread or the yeast will just go nuts. But just to be on the safe side, we put it in the flour and then stir the flour into it. Now notice I'm not using an electric mixer. You can if you want to, but it's not necessary. 
this is just going to be a shaggy mix and it's not going to be pretty it's not going to be super smooth you can get in there and stir this with your hands if you want to but it's not even that big of a deal this is going to be um, in the refrigerator like i said for four days so it's going to come together it's going to be nice and smooth when you take it out it's going to be very very elastic and like i said this will make two pizza crusts and so we will divide it in half and make two pizzas out of it so get that in there take the rings off I can feel the moisture inside the dough so it's got plenty of room to accept all this flour that's in the outside of it and the dough is nice and warm which feels good because it's cold outside it's sunny and beautiful out there it's such a gift but it's cold out there you'll use your dough to just wipe off the edges of your bowl it should come off pretty easily now we're not going to keep it in this big bowl so use a big bowl if you want to you won't need that room in the refrigerator i'm going to show you what to do with this dough in just a minute but it's not going to take up much room in your fridge at all the next video i'll put out uh, probably right behind this one will be for our pizza sauce now you can buy store-bought pizza sauce if you want to you can use um, spaghetti sauce you can use whatever you want i mean you can just use tomatoes if you want but um, it took me a long time and a lot of tries to find the pizza sauce that I have and I don't share it with just a lot of people but you know what when you're doing YouTube and you're cooking you share it with a lot of people so I'm gonna share it with you and I don't think you'll be disappointed in this what I'd normally do is make several batches of it at one time put it in small uh, little canning jars just enough for uh, Usually if I fill them up, up about three-fourths of the way, it's enough for one pizza. But if you put them in a bigger jar, you'll just know you're going to make more pizzas that time. But I will put them in canning jars, leave plenty of headspace, and stick them in the freezer. Then when I get ready to make a pizza, I'll thaw it out in a warm bowl of water. And it is fabulous. Okay, all our dough has pretty much come together. And I'll show you what to do with this next. not a zip top bag but you're welcome to use a zip top bag this is just a plastic I think they're called bread bags at the store so we're just going to put uh, maybe half a teaspoon of olive oil in the very bottom of the bag take that smush it around don't get it at the top of the bag just keep it at the bottom roll it around that way your dough will not stick to the bag at all. It's gonna come out beautifully. Open that up. Put that dough in there. See, it looks kind of shaggy. It's really not like super mixed well. It's not really that smooth, but it's gonna get smooth in the next few days. Put that in the bag. Now if you use up to uh, a teaspoon and a half of yeast or whatever you'd like to use in it, it's going to need a little bit of space in the bag and you might have to burp the bag every day or so. But for right now, I just kind of leave a little bit of air in it, twist it like that. I'm going to lay it on a shelf just like that and it's going to sit in there and take a nap for four days. So next time I see you, we're going to come back and make some uh, pizza sauce but we're also gonna wind up making our pizzas at the very end of this. So we'll see how many of these videos I actually put together to get this product um, in its full recipe to you. So thanks for sticking with us, see ya. Tanya, and today we are going to finish making our pizza. I put out a video the other day, uh, which will be posted in this group of videos 
to make pizza dough. But the reason it wasn't out already is because I want to include it in this, but I had to make the dough four days ahead of time. It's been sitting in the refrigerator, but again, I'll include it in this video. Right now we're gonna be making the pizza sauce because you'll wanna make this and just let it cool off before you start making your pizza. This is gonna make more than enough for one pizza, so you'll have plenty to put in jars and put in the freezer. So let's get started. I have my saucepan heating up. To that, we are going to add four tablespoons of olive oil. And I've been waiting all morning on Zoe, one of my schnauzers, to uh, eat her breakfast, and she wouldn't do it. She just kept, keeps looking at me. And now that she hears me talking and the cameras are out, she decides to eat. So sorry about the noise in the background. Two tablespoons of butter. You little bad kid. You little bad kid. And to that, our oil isn't really super hot yet. It is melting the butter, but it's not hot yet. We're gonna add a full cup of chopped onions. So you can see those there. Don't worry too much about getting them chopped super fine as long as you have a blender or particularly an immersion blender is what I like to use because I can just do it in the pan and blend it up smooth. Uh, if you have chunks of celery, chunks of onions, don't worry too much about that. They'll be blended up smoothly. This is a half a cup of celery. Two cloves of garlic. Right now, it's about mid-morning here at my house. And again, I'll say that I made the pizza dough enough for two pizzas four days ago and it's been relaxing in the refrigerator. When I say relaxing, it truly means that the dough is relaxing because had we tried to roll it out when I first made the dough, it would have just kind of start shrinking back up. So this way, we're gonna roll that dough out and it's all gonna be relaxed. The gluten in it's gonna be kind of calmed down. It's like chill out dough and it'll keep its shape really well. So I wanna show you several things that People are just scared to make pizza because they're so intimidated by the restaurant style pizza and sometimes when you make it at home you just can't get it right. I'm not sure where this information has been hidden all these years but I am here to enlighten you today at least on the way I do it and I promise you it tastes just like restaurant pizza. I'm not kidding when I say that. I'm not exaggerating. I'm not bragging on myself because it's taken me a long time to figure out how to get this done but there's a few key things. Number one, letting your pizza dough relax and making it from scratch. And it's so easy to make from scratch. Your pizza sauce, you can use something like a jarred pizza sauce. I don't really know what's in that, but if you're comfortable with ingredients, by all means, feel free to use that. But if you ever try this and you taste it, then you won't buy pizza sauce from a jar again, I'm pretty sure. The other is to use a really good cheese. I like the full fat mozzarella. Sometimes I buy just regular skim milk mozzarella or low fat, I think it's called mozzarella, but I do like the full fat. And in the store, you can normally find that closer to the queso fresca and the, uh, I call them Mexican cheeses because I don't really know what the names of all of them are except for the queso but you will find it over there. It'll, it'll say whole milk mozzarella and it's super soft. It almost feels like a squishy rubber ball, but it's really, really good. We're gonna cook this just a bit until the onion gets soft and translucent. This goes together pretty fast. Really, your main part is gonna be chopping your onions and your celery to begin with. This is not a long process. One of the other things that 
makes a pizza more like restaurant quality pizza is having your oven heated up super hot oh. and having a surface to put your dough on or put your pizza on when it goes in the oven that is already heated up. A lot of times we try to make a pizza and we'll put it on a cold pan, put that cold pan in a hot oven and it starts sweating underneath that condensation from the cold pan and the hot oven causes moisture in between the pan and the pizza and then you've got soggy crust which is not something that you get in a restaurant so ideally what you want to do is place that dough directly on a surface that is super hot it's as hot as your oven and when i say a hot oven i'm talking about like 500 degrees so if you can get your oven up that hot and i realize a lot of people have smaller ovens and they just can't get the temperature up high for one reason or another but get it as hot as you can if you have a pizza stone that's a great surface to work with because you're not going to have anything stick to it whatsoever but i'm going to show you a technique tonight it may take you a while to practice it you can practice it um, with just a, a fake something on your uh, utensils and try to get it in there but I want to show you a technique that I just it, it, it's like I go to bed thinking of things that will make processes easier and this is one of the processes that I came up with in my mind and it looks kind of silly but trust me it works really well but when that crust when that pizza dough hits that hot stone it automatically starts getting that crust on the bottom and it's almost like a cracker. It's just so fabulous. But this is really a game changer for anybody who likes pizza but is afraid to make it at home. Please, please, please give this a try. And I promise you, it will, it will change the way you do things. The pizza restaurant's going to be asking where you are. All right. Our onions are pretty translucent. Turn the heat down just a bit. To this, we're going to add a 15 ounce can of tomato sauce. We're going to add 12 ounces of tomato paste, which is two of these little six ounce cans. Should have dug that first part out with a spoon instead of trying my cute little spatula. I'm so excited about using my new little spatula that my friend got me. It's nice when you cook and several people know about it and uh, when they give you gifts for one reason or another. They're just the funnest things ever. Never have too many spatulas, too many cute spoons, things like that. And my friends are the best. Okay, let's try digging this first part out with the can, of the can with the big spoon. There we go. That worked better. Now we can dig out the rest of it with the tiny spatula. Since we're not having lunch or dinner guests tonight, I'm only going to be wake, making one pizza for my husband and myself. But I'm hoping I can make another pizza in the next few days so I can show you two different kinds of pizza that are some of our favorites. And for my Tulsa friends watching, you're going to want to pay close attention to the one we make for tonight. We'll give Hideaway Pizza a run for its money. Okay, to this, we are going to add two teaspoons of basil. This is basil that I grew in my so-called garden. Whoops, I better turn that down. That's popping all over me. I grew basil in pots in my backyard, and it did really, really well this past summer. So I had a lot of it to dry. Okay, two teaspoons of dried oregano. And I just have jars that I've collected from one thing or another that 
I put these chalkboard labels on and then paint the names on it and they go in my spice drawer. Okay, let's give this a try here. If it starts spitting at me again, I'll have to take it completely off. A teaspoon of salt. It's revving up, it's wanting to get ugly. We're gonna put a teaspoon of honey in here. I better wipe this spoon off. I don't think I want it to taste like oregano in my honey jar. Just a little blob of honey. Half a teaspoon of ground black pepper. Of course, the clock has to ding and tick. Two teaspoons of fennel seed. If you're not familiar with fennel seed, um, it smells like licorice, but this is actually the key to really good pizza sauce. And I think when I found this recipe, it didn't even have that in it, but I was like, you know, it would be really good with that in it. It just made all the difference in the world. I was very pleased about putting it in there. It has the, it gives it the taste that you would normally um, connect with Italian sausage. That's that's the Italian flavor to it, I guess, is the fennel seed. But it's it's a really really lovely taste. Now we're going to put a couple of bay leaves in this before we. Uh, actually, let me put my Parmesan in it first. We're gonna put uh, four tablespoons of Parmesan cheese, and you know I grated this while ago right before I turned the cameras on, so. Nobody thinking this is pre-grated cheese. It's not. It's not gonna turn out the same if you do it pre-grated. There's cellulose on it, and it's gonna give it a different texture. So four tablespoons of the best Parmesan that you have or can find. And we're going to put two bay leaves in here and don't worry about um, the bay leaves just pick the prettiest ones you can also known as the ones easiest to find and dig out later on because we're going to take these out before we puree it with the immersion blender so just drop those bay leaves in like that and we'll put our lid on and we're going to let this simmer a little while if it looks like it's really dry Feel free to add some water to it. What you're basically doing is just uh, getting all the onions and celery still cooked together. So you're gonna simmer this for about 30 minutes, but turn it down on really low. You don't want anything to scorch or burn because you do have cheese in there and it being a dairy product, it would stick to the bottom, worst case scenario. But we're gonna simmer this for 30 minutes and when I come back, I will turn the immersion blender on and let you see how smooth we can get it. It has been about 30 minutes since we started simmering our pizza sauce. We want to take the lid off. And I'm going to turn that down. Sometimes it just surprises me and bubbles up like a volcano when I have my face closest to the pan. Not ideal. All right, there's one bay leaf we'll fish out. There's the other one. Are you bubbling? Stop it. Okay, now we're going to use our immersion blender. If you don't have an immersion blender, I would say think about it if you have the space and if you have the funds for one. These aren't that expensive. This is this is kind of a nice one. Uh, this was given to me a few years ago, but I have just used this so much. You'll see later on in videos, we make mayonnaise later on, and this is indispensable. You have to have this, uh, unless you know how to make it with a blender, and I'm not familiar with making it with that, but this is such a good tool. These range from, you could probably find a lesser expensive one for about $30, and they go all the way up to the actually the size of a trolling motor, and it's in the hundreds at the... Um, professional cookware store, but we don't need one that big, just a small one. But 
you're going to put this directly on the bottom of the pen. Now, some of these come with a plastic casing down here. I'm not as big of a fan of those as I am this stainless steel one. That's why I was so excited to get this one, because I can put this down and not worry about the plastic and all that stuff being funky with the food. But I have it plugged in over there. You're going to put it directly on the bottom. Just pulse it. And now, if you like your pizza sauce chunky, that's fine. You're more than welcome to leave it unprocessed, and you don't have to get it smooth. But I like my smooth just not necessarily for a texture as far as eating it, but it's more of a, it's easier for me to spread it out on my pizza crust and know that I have it everywhere instead of lumps everywhere. I just like to have it smooth, kind of like spreading out peanut butter. We have our burner turned off. about a half a cup of this on each pizza. Now, if you like more sauce on it, you're welcome to do that, but I just find that about a half a cup of this on a regular size pizza is plenty. It doesn't overwhelm any other part of pizza, but it's your pizza and you do what you want with it. But it's just so nice to be able to have control over what ingredients goes in your family's food. You're not overwhelmed with preservatives or loads of sugar, which this does not have any and it doesn't need um, you're in control over whether you use organic or not if you don't want the fear of pesticides or genetically modified foods in there you've got control over it and it's so nice to invite friends over and let everybody make their own pizza just make the smaller crust and make them in the oven at home it's just it just makes the party that much more fun okay all right, I'm going to go clean this off, but we will come back and uh, make our pizzas later on this afternoon. But for right now, this is just going to sit here and cool off a bit, then I'll put it in the refrigerator. I'll probably take some of it, put it in small canning jars, and put it in the freezer if I can find space. But you probably have enough here for at least, I would say, at least 10 to 15 pizzas. So you'll have enough to last you for a while. But anyway, we'll be back after a while. Hey guys. Okay, we're gonna continue our video on making pizza. And even though I'm not really ready to put it in the oven, I wanna show you the process. I don't wanna miss out on anything so it doesn't leave uh, kind of a bubble of confusion there. This is my dough that's been in the refrigerator for four days. I dated it with a piece of masking tape, of course. So I'm just gonna cut this in half because this makes two pizzas and I'm only making one for tonight. We don't have dinner guests. It's just me and my husband, so we only need one. Put the rest of it back in the fridge. And so I'm gonna take this dough and coat it with flour. I have my pizza peel out. I have a tea towel. Well, it's not really a tea towel. It's a, it's kind of a, a cotton, real thin, uh, well, it's not really a dish towel. It's not thick, so it's a thin piece of cotton, but it's pretty long. Um, I'm gonna dip this in my flour bucket and get it coated with flour. I have my oven preheated for 475, so that's heating up right now. And I'm gonna show you from that camera. I'm, uh, I don't know if, let me see if it can see it from back there. Yep. I think you can see it from back there. I have both of my, I just have two racks in this oven for right now. I have one stored in the closet, but my pizza stove 
is at the bottom. You'll always see my pizza stone in the bottom of the oven. I just never take it out. It's in the very bottom of the oven. I have my racks moved up because I'm going to need room to put the pizza on the pizza stone once it's ready to go in the oven. So I'm going to roll out my pizza crust. I have my marble rolling pin. I have a wooden one and a marble one. This one's just a little bit heavy. I don't have to use as much effort to roll it out. But you can see that when I roll this out, the dough really doesn't come back together. So it's pretty relaxed. Thus, we had it in the refrigerator for four days. And for some reason, those flavors just get so much better when it's in the refrigerator for that long. I can't explain it. I don't know the science behind it. But it's just better than if you use it immediately after mixing up your dough. Now my countertop did not have flour on it. I just dipped that dough down into the flour. Sometimes I have to put a little bit extra on it, but this is going okay for right now. And you want to roll it out about the size of your pizza stone or your pizza peel, whatever you have. This is what my pizza peel looks like. It's very well used, well loved. These do not have to be rolled out in a perfect circle, but mine usually goes pretty good in a circle. Sometimes it's shaped like an amoeba. So here's where I want you to pay attention to what we're going to do. The short end of this cloth, see the long end is on this side. This is the short end across the top. We're going to lay this on the pizza peel with the, ed the top edge of it right there at the handle. Take the rest of it, tuck it under, and we're going to lay it aside just like that. I'm going to kind of tuck it in around the edges just so I can see where the edge of the pizza peel is. Take your pizza dough, fold it in half, pick it up, lay it on there and cover half of it. Unfold it. This is kind of how we do a pie crust when we make it, but this is really, really flexible. I like to tuck the edge of mine under just a bit. It makes it just have that little bit of a, a double thickness on the edge. I somehow, in my mind, I'm thinking if there's so much sauce on it, then it'll form like a little edge and it won't come off, but I don't really think it helps in that way. But I like the look of it there too. So we got that just about the size of our pizza peel. And we'll get our pizza sauce out. In these jars is normally enough for two pizzas. And I counted up what I made earlier in that batch of pizza sauce. And that was enough for two of these jars. And then I believe there were eight in... Um, what is one of those um, those flexible ice trays? They have the bigger cubes, and it has the little kind of like a rubbery bottom on them where you can push them out. Uh, you can find them at specialty stores. I, I think the big box stores actually have those too. But uh, somebody had given those to me at one point, and I found that they work really well because each one of those bigger cubes is about the size to hold enough pizza sauce for one. So all that being said, that pizza sauce made enough, that batch we made today earlier in this video, made enough for about 12 pizzas. So we're gonna take our sauce, and spread it on there. This has such a good smell to it. Those fennel seeds plus the Parmesan that we added to it is just really nice. I don't put this on too thick 
and it's pretty spreadable. It's not a runny sauce by any means. I'm not too concerned about getting it even and all the way to the edge. I like to leave a little bit of space there. So about half that. We'll put the rest of this back in the refrigerator to use for a different day. The next thing we want to do is put our mozzarella on. I grated this earlier. This is um, this is eight ounces of mozzarella. I had to figure out what size my block was, but I had a pound block of mozzarella and I cut it in half and grated half of it. Put that almost to the edge. I hesitate to put it too close to the edge. I don't want it hanging off because then if it falls off, then it falls onto the pizza stone and it, it has that burn smell to it. But put it almost to the edge. Now let me get our other toppings over here. This is some Canadian bacon. This is uncured Canadian bacon. I try to stay away from cured meats as much as possible. Again, there's a carcinogen in there, so just now you know. If you can find uncured meats, that's always the safer route to go. This is Canadian bacon. You can also use ham. And I do just go back and forth. I just happen to have this. I had some in the freezer, so I thawed out about half the package. Scatter it across the top. This is a good job for kids if you have kids in the kitchen. Get a little assembly line going. Make sure your ingredients are as dry as you can get them. Any kind of moisture is just going to weigh it down. Doesn't always cook out as well as what one would like. I find that Frozen bell peppers are a big culprit in making it have too much moisture in the top. But I could have probably dried that meat off just a little bit. It would have helped out a bit. All right, and here's our other toppings. I had some pineapple. And some of your, I think I can hear you moaning through the computer that you're watching on. Um, pineapple is really good in this. There's a restaurant in Tulsa. We also have one in the Little Rock area called Hideaway, but I first experienced Hideaway when we lived in Tulsa several years ago, and their food was just so good. It just tasted so clean and fresh, and we enjoyed going there so much. So when we got one here in the Little Rock area, I thought, oh man, we're gonna go there all the time. I've been there once. So this is uh, kind of designed after one of their pizzas. The name of it is Maui Magic. You're probably going to hear the dog start barking because somebody just drove in and the garage door went up. So I'm going to try to get this on there before they start yelling and then I'll pop it in the oven. I'll turn the camera back on and pop it in the oven. I'll have the other camera on so you can see how we put it in the oven because there's kind of a trick to that. I don't want you to be scared off by it, but I do want you to know how to do it. So we'll be back in just a bit and pop this in the oven as soon as our oven preheats. All right, our oven is preheated and we're gonna put this in the oven. I have a camera set up over here as you can see from that camera. Normally I try to kind of hide one when the other one's going on, but I want you to see that I'm opening the oven and then I want you to see how I'm putting this in. Remember, we've got this part hanging down at the bottom. I'm gonna hold onto that right here. Hopefully this camera will catch what I'm doing. We're going to put it on the very bottom on the pizza stone. I'm going to hold on to the handle. I've got this in my left hand. Put it all the way to the back. Set it down on the pizza stone. 
and as you're pulling back on the paddle, you're going to pull on the cloth. And we can hear that sizzling once it hits the pizza stone. We're going to set the oven for, let me look at my recipe here. We're going to set it for about 10 minutes. At the end of those 10 minutes, I'll turn the camera back on and I'll let you see it. We'll put it back on this pizza peel. We're done with this for right now. So we'll set that aside. But you'll see the final product when we come back. Okay, I want to show you this pizza. You can see it in here. Looks like it's breathing. and these tongs, you can use a fork, whatever. Turn the oven off. Grab the edge of your pizza, slide it up on the peel. And there it is. This is what is called Maui Magic at Hideaway Pizza. Slice that in just a bit. Just want you to be able to see it. There's the pizza. There's our salad. And the dressing that I will hopefully do a video on soon. It's a honey vinaigrette that is fabulous. All right. And there's our pizza again. Thanks for watching, and I really, really hope that you give this a shot. This is not scary. This is easy to do. This is such restaurant quality, you will surprise yourself. So hopefully it'll work out for you. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Here we go with our bonus part of our video. I want to show y'all how to make cheeseburger pizza. This is made with organic ground beef and not a lot of it. It really doesn't have a lot of ingredients as far as the amounts of each, but all combined, it's just so good. It's, I mean, it's better than a restaurant. I promise you this. Okay, remember the other day we used our half of our dough recipe. So we have the other half. It's been in the refrigerator for the last few days. So what I'm going to do right now is just roll out my dough and then uh, in just a bit, I'm going to let this rest a while because our lunch guests are supposed to be here in about 40 minutes. And so I'm going to roll this out and then when it gets closer time for them to show up, I'm going to start putting the toppings on and I'll turn the camera back on. So for right now, we're going to take our dough and just dip it down in my bread can or my flour container here. Just enough flour to coat the outside. And what we want to do also is position our rag. Now remember we talked about this tea towel and you have the long side which is top and bottom, the short side's on top. So you're going to take it on the short side and lay it at the top of your pizza peel, not covering the handle, just up to the handle. So any place that your dough is going to be covering, we want that towel on. You'll have this excess at the bottom. Take it and pull it up toward the handle and lay it down on your countertop. Tucking in the edges just so you'll know, you'll be aware of where the edge of your pizza peel is. So we want to roll out our pizza dough. Get that out of the way. So you'll have enough dough to make two pizzas with the recipe in this video. And so, once this is done, you're gonna have two recipes under your belt for 
sort of unique, maybe different pizzas than what you've given to your family before. If you're like me, I'm just in that mode where I'm like, uh, just throw some vegetables on there or throw some breakfast sausage I've cooked and had left over or throw some onions and peppers on there or our old standby, pepperoni and mushroom. We love pepperoni and mushroom. Try to get your crust about the size of the circle on your pizza peel, but if you can't, then that's totally fine. If it's too big, you can always tuck it under, so don't worry about that. And this dough is super relaxed now. So if we thought four days was good to leave it in the refrigerator and relaxed, apparently uh, close to seven is even better. It would probably take a long time for this dough to actually go bad in the refrigerator. I've had it in there for as much as two weeks and used it and it's just fabulous texture. The flavor gets better. It's almost like it ferments a bit and it's just really, really a good flavor. Okay, we're gonna tuck in our edges just a bit. Now, like I said, I'm just gonna show you the crust right now, just kind of a refresher course, because we did this before with the Maui Magic Pizza, the pineapple and mandarin orange and Canadian bacon pizza we did the other day. So just showing you how to do this once again. And then when it's closer time for our guests to show up, I'll preheat my oven, get it super hot, and then start putting my toppings on. I already have them chopped up and put in little containers and in the refrigerator so they're just basically ready to plop on there. This doesn't require a pizza sauce like we made the other day, so kind of a little teaser to keep you watching, I guess. This has a different sauce to it. I think you might have this in your refrigerator already. All right, we're just gonna leave this out room temperature, it's not gonna hurt it at all, and we'll be back in just a minute. Okay, back again, we're gonna put our sauce and our toppings on our pizza, and then pop it in the oven as soon as it preheats. And the first thing we wanna do is put the sauce on there, and this is our sauce. We have yellow mustard, and we have Dijon mustard. And I don't measure this, I just kinda squirt it out so we can just guess as how much is in there. I would say maybe a tablespoon of yellow. A tablespoon of Dijon, just mix them up on there. Use an offset spatula or whatever you have and just spread it almost to the edge, pretty close to the edge. pizza and you're thinking cheddar cheese this is the mozzarella this is our first layer of cheese the cheddar cheese is simply one of the flavorings on the top if you will so I've got to top this with the mozzarella I shredded and cut and chopped a while ago so I wouldn't have to do this because nobody wants to sit and watch me shred cheese and chop up some pickles and onions and tomatoes and stuff now the ground beef when we get to that it's only a quarter of a pound of ground beef, so what I did was I cooked up a whole pound of ground beef. I took out about a fourth of it, and the rest of it I seasoned for taco salad, and it's in the refrigerator for later on this week. So push your mozzarella almost to the edge. All your toppings are gonna go on top because they need to be cooked more than the cheese does. That's just kind of a rule of thumb there. You'll see some pizzas, they'll have all the toppings and they'll put the cheese on top of it, but apparently those are toppings that don't need to be heated up very much. But your toppings need to be 
cooked more than your cheese needs to be heated up. So that's what's closest to the heat. Ah, there's our oven. All right, next thing we're gonna put on, and it doesn't really matter what order you put these in. I'm just kind of randomly putting them in an order that I normally do. This is our ground beef. And just plop it on there, ever how you see fit. Sometimes the more unorganized it looks, it looks a little bit rustic and it makes people think you're such a good cook and it just tastes better. I don't know if it does or not. This always tastes good though. All right, the ground beef is on there. Let's put our, um, let's put our pickles on there next. I am kind of a pickle connoisseur and I really like good pickles. I've shown a picture of the pickles that I use for this. Not every pickle is up to par with those. I just think those are really fabulous ones. There's also a brand called Woodstock that makes dill pickles and theirs are really, really nice. They have a great flavor to them and they don't have artificial colors and preservatives and things like that in them, which I really appreciate. Now if our guests ring the doorbell and the dogs go nuts, we'll just muddle through that. These are the chopped onions. This is a yellow onion. Uh, I would say I would say I used almost a fourth of a cup of chopped pickles if you're wondering what the amount on that is. This is half of a yellow onion. And I don't necessarily know that I'm gonna use all of this. I just kind of put it on there till it looks like it's supposed to. So I probably have a couple of tablespoons left in there that I won't be using. Uh, let's put our cheese on next. Again, this, the cheddar is just for flavor. It's not necessarily the coating for your pizza as far as making it look like a pizza. This is just simply for flavor. So I have sharp cheddar. And then I have some tomatoes. This is about a fourth a cup of chopped tomatoes. Now I can't find organic tomatoes around here in the off season unless it's the cherry tomatoes so that's what these are these are organic cherry tomatoes and they have a good flavor to them they really do all right I'm going to take and push this down a little bit just because I don't want our ingredients falling off when I pop it in the oven. And since our oven is preheated, we're gonna put this in there. I'm fixing to reposition the camera though. All right. Going to grab the base of our towel here that we have hanging down, put our pizza all the way in the oven, and as we pull our towel, we pull our pizza peel back, and the pizza goes on the pizza stone. Someday I'm going to learn how to film and do this all at the same time. All right, close the oven up. We're going to set the oven for, uh, we're going to set it for 10 minutes. And we'll see what it looks like after that. So we'll be right back when it comes out. All right, our oven timer just went off and we're gonna get our pizza out of the oven. Grab your pizza peel or whatever you have, stick in there, I'm gonna turn the oven off. Put your pizza peel right next to it and with a fork or something like that, just pull your pizza up there. Be careful, don't burn your hands. I want to show you the crust. See if you can get a picture of that crust down there at the bottom. It's super hot. That crust is crispy like crazy. And all that because of the hot stone that we laid it on. Had we put it on the oven rack with even a 
just a room temperature pan, it would not do this. The steam from the heat of the oven and the moisture and the contents of the pizza would cause that crust to become kind of mushy and just not crisp at all. But you've got a super crisp pizza because you put it directly on that super hot stone. So let's cut into this. I just want you to see what a piece of it looks like. All right, see that steam coming off there? Okay guys, that's your second pizza for the video. I hope you try both of these. Love to hear in the comments if you've tried them. Can't wait to see you next time on the next video and share something else with you. Thanks.